Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I use. Every comment, hate that makes my feel gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. All right, this is Keep Hammering Collective round two with Mitch Aguiar. Yeah. Did I say it right? You did. See, I got it, it now. I got it now. But this is a, a little bit different because we did a podcast before we did any of the experience, like shooting the bow on the mountain. I just wanted to get right into the podcast to hear about, you know, the sparring with Sean. And yeah. now, post all the experience, here we are. Here for, we are. For a little recap update. Um yeah, how was it? I mean, it's been like a vacation. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we've, fun, relaxing. We've had, we've had a ton of fun. Yeah, and uh, a lot of laughs, and yeah, it's been it's been great. You know, oh. I'd rather do this than go to Disney World or something. <laughs> Me <know>? too, definitely. <laughs> I love doing this. It's like, and I said, like on the mountain. Normally, I'm doing that by myself. So people think that I'm doing this. You know, for them, this is for me. This yeah. is like, oh, I get somebody to to train with, to join in on my suffering. Misery and, loves company. Yeah, and it's as much for me as it is, probably more for me than anybody. So, yeah, if you got something out of it too, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I had a I had a great time. Um, like I said, got you know, got to push myself um, and uh, shared a lot of laughs and had a great time. I don't know, got some sun. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, I got the blood flowing through my legs, uh, breaking up that, that bruise from Sean Strickland. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, so, I mean, you really helped in my recovery and everything. So That's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> what a friend's for. <laughs> yeah. So it, you got lucky in that we finally got a heat wave here. Yeah. And, and I was, it, yeah. Couldn't have been, couldn't have picked a better time. It was like the hottest days on record here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, we just really lucked out. And then my how my brain works is like most people, when it's going to be hot, they're like, oh, I better get my workout in early, right, before it gets too hot. I, on the other hand, look at the weather and like, where is the hottest part of the day? Okay, boom, that's when I'm going to be on the mountain. So that's what we did yesterday. And uh, how it went is I thought, well, let's run this first just get a little you know grind up get a little warm up and uh that's a test just that but then i thought well we'll go back down get the rock and i'll get the the go ruck and we'll pack some weight up for the second time so how do what was your what's your thoughts on that experience so you know I've, I've followed you for years and I've always seen you at the top of that hill and I assume it's, it's a decent distance, you know, just knowing you and, uh, that it's, that it's not easy. So I didn't, um, I didn't go into it thinking that it was going to be easy, but you, you know, you told me that, that, uh, that route that we were going to do is only about a mile and a half. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, you know, a mile and a half, that doesn't sound Should too bad. Easy. And, um, and it was very, uh, it was a very difficult mile and a half because it was up hill what the, it gained what about a thousand feet. A thousand feet. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem like that, that, that big of a deal going into it, but it, the heat definitely made it a little bit more challenging and the, and we didn't really have any water. And, uh, so that the heat was just, um, you know, huffing and puffing, it was drying my mouth out more than anything that, I mean, the water r really wasn't that big of an issue until we did the, the rock Yeah, and, um, and we had already been out on the mountain for a while and the mountain is just getting hotter, baking in the sun mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. So, but anyway, the first, the first run up, uh, I tried keeping up with you for, for, first quarter mile and then you started to get uh pulling away and and then i tried to run for as long as i could um but once once you start turning up those those yeah. hills um the even with the short choppy steps it just starts yeah. to fatigue you pretty quick so then i you know i ended up hiking up like some of the steeper parts and, and then that's i would still good yeah and i would try to run on the uh, less steep parts 
Um, but my goal was to just not stop. Right. And you never stopped. No, never no, stopped. You, did, you killed it. I mean, it's, that's hard to do. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a, uh, a push for sure. And, um, brought me right back to the, uh, to the, the Grand Canyon run. Oh, you know, yeah. The rim to rim to rim. Yeah, How that was just, day. it's just a long uphill. You can't, you can't look at the, or try to even find the finish line, mm -hmm. you know, because it's just going to discourage you. Um, and I just, so I just look down and just look at the next, you know, 10 feet and yeah. just, just kind of keep taking it One look, 10 at feet time. at a time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's that, that was good. I mean, that's a good workout. That's what most people do. Like for their workout for the day, it's like, they're going to run up or hike up to the summit of Pisgah and back down and then that's good. Yeah. And, uh, so and that, we, and that would be a good, that would, yeah, that would be a good it's push, great. especially in that heat. Yeah. It's great. And it's, you know, anytime you can get on a hill, you're just going to get that much more out of it because it's in on trail like that, where your body's kind of having to correct. So you're kind of engage your core. It's, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just way more engaging overall. But, uh, so then we ran down when I was pumped, I got to jump up on top yeah, of the mountain or I know. on top of the monument. the monument. Yeah, that was that was sick. Got I've, a flex I've, up I've, there. I've seen you do that over and over on your on oh. your Instagram. So I was like, all right, I gotta I gotta yeah. just send it and go for it. Yeah. That and was uh great. Yeah, was able to get it. So that was that was cool. Yeah, that was great. And we we bombed down there. Beautiful view up there. Yeah, too. it is. You can see all the way east to the to the big mountains, to the Cascades. Yeah, coming down, like I, I didn't get to appreciate the view going up because mm. like I said, I was just lo looking at the ground the next 10 feet. And then, um, yeah, as we were coming down, I was like, oh man, what a what a pretty view up yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, pretty lucky to live here. We This is a pretty special place, being born and raised here. I, I try not to take it for granted, but it's, uh, you know, wherever you grow up, you're just kind of used to. But yeah, when you take a minute and look around, you're like, man, this is this is an incre incredible country. The valley here is always lush and green. You know, it's uh, where I five goes through the Willamette Valley, and we got the rivers down here, uh, the McKinsey and Willamette, and um, it's just perfect. You know, you know why people settled here because it's just it's fertile land, and it's a great place to live. So yeah, it's good to appreciate it from the top of the mountain there. But then we went down and uh, then grabbed grab the, the rock. rock. Yeah. <laughs> How'd that feel? It was, uh, man, it was, uh, it was awkward, you know, more than anything. Um, it was 70, 72 pounds. So I knew it was going to be a good amount of weight, but, uh, and I knew that it was going to be the awkwardness of the shape of it. You know what I mean? There's not really a good, there's not really a good way to carry it. Not really, no. And, um, I knew that that was going to be, you know, the, the most annoying part. And then I, I figured, uh, just from fatigue and stuff at, at going up that the mountain. And then we went up the the when when we did the rock route, we went up more your ladder route. So mm -hmm. it was it was a shorter distance but steeper, and um, that was that was definitely challenging for sure. And uh, I knew that I was going to have to put the rock down at points, and you know. And then I was like, oh damn, now every time I put the rock down, I have to put, I have to pick the rock <laughs> yeah. back up. So I'm doing like a, you know, a clean, a little clean, you know, deadlift to clean of this rock and then, uh, going up a little more at a time. Yeah. So, and I think when we first started, you know, I got, um, I, I would pr probably go, I don't know. I want to say, four or five minutes without maybe yeah. four or five minutes without putting it down. Mm -hmm. And then I'd have to put it down and take a, take a, a couple big breaths and then uh, pick it up and carry on. And then it, it just started getting the stints started getting uh, shorter. shorter. Yeah. But, um, but never too, too bad though. No, not, not <clears throat> crazy. No, it wasn't crazy. I mean, we were, it was hot. Up the hill. It was hot. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the fact that like we, uh, you know, James, James was, uh, gracious enough to carry a water bottle in his backpack. Uh, the, the viewers know him as Gideon. Gideon. Yeah. Okay. So Gideon had, he had carried a, you know, just a regular 16 ounce yeah. water bottle. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was, uh, it was, um, 
nerve-wracking drinking it because <laughs> I was watching like, it go down yeah because you're just watching this little bottle and i see this giant hill in front of me and every time you know i put this rock on my shoulder and start hiking up ah, 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 and push putting out putting out putting out and put it down and my mouth couldn't be more dry from the heat and uh and i look up at the top and then look at this water bottle and i'm just like <laughs> Oh my God, this is going to be be about five gallons. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just taking little sips at a time just to, to get my tongue, you know, uh, some moist so that I could swallow. And, um, I asked him one time, we were getting sort of toward the top and I said, I go, does he have any water left? And he's like, like half a gulp. And I'm like, (laughs) and we weren't at the, you know, had a ways to go. I'm like, "Mm." oh yeah. And I knew that. And it's, the more and more water because you're you're thirsty as as hell so you have to like you have to drink water because your body's like demanding it but then seeing it like once it's gone it's gone (laughs) and there's a whole hell of a lot of mountain left and you're not going to have any water to wet your whistle at all so that's more what i was doing is just trying to control the urge to not drink it all yeah but just enough to get like that satisfaction of getting my mouth wet Mm. You know, it's a, I think that it's important that we do, and you've done a lot of hard things, but I think it's important to do things like that because how often do we take drinking water for granted? You know, oh, when it's like you got unlimited water, you're like, oh, throwing it around, splashing mm-hmm. it, dumping it out. Yeah. But when you're in that situation, it's like every drop yeah. is so valuable. Yeah. You're like, all I want is water. Which I've been, I've been in situations like that when it comes to weight cutting, you know, mm-hmm. um, or like where you, you've never appreciated water until you are, you know, cutting 15 pounds of it in one day and right. you're sitting in the sauna, just all your body wants is water. That's all it's thinking about mm-hmm. is just drink. And it's right there. You could drink it, yeah. you know, but you, but you can't, you know, the, that's the is choice. Is that harder? Than running out and wanting it, or what's harder in those situations? Um, I would say they're pretty similar. I don't know; they're, they're kind of similar because it, my my mind is is it doesn't matter yeah. if it's there or not. Right, you can't drink it. Like it, it, like if you it, you know if you had water if he had more water, but you said, Hey, we're not drinking any water, the rest of this hill climb. Yeah. Then that's, then that's just, that's the rules, you know, (laughs) and that's how it is. So, and like in the weight cut, you know, yeah, I could drink, but Mm -hmm. I, it'll, it'll throw off my weight. Right. You know, and that's so that's like against the rules essentially. Very similar, you know, but that it was just more, we physically don't have any more water, (laughs) you know? So I, I, I would give you water if I had some, yeah, but yeah. we don't have any. Right. So that was kind of more uh, an interesting, like, man, am I going to get heat stroke up here or I know. whatever? Could happen easily. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if I fell over and just passed out, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. We're up in the top of this damn mountain <laughs> yeah. on this random trail. You know, even even if the ambulance had to come get me at some point, it would take a while. Stretchers, <laughs> it'd be stretchers up there. It, it, that'd be tough. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, they would probably they would have to probably helo in. Yeah, I mean, medevac I, maybe. They uh, over us over on Spencer is not too long ago, and some lady fell and got hurt. And yeah. They had a helo come. In. Yeah. I helped him carry her up to the top, though. Yeah. So it might have to carry you up to the monument and land, land right there. Yeah. But no, I mean, not that we were anywhere close no, to that. No, no, We were not for any viewers out there. <laughs> I, I mean, I but, was in very good spirits. Yeah. And you, we we you, were we were more laughing at the uh, misery. Fact, yeah, at the misery, not complaining. No. It was more like we were making a lot of jokes about the misery. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I thought it was. Yeah, it was hard. It's mo- hot. It was mostly downhill. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's my go-to. I'm like, yeah, we're at the top now, and we're actually like maybe halfway. I'm like, yeah. this is downhill up there. <laughs> There's like, <laughs> there just like these mental mi- or mind games you play. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, I I love doing that, but also I know there is a uh, there's risk. 
I don't want to, you know, you're, you're a beast and so tough. So I wasn't worried, but I, I probably need to be smarter about like putting other people in that situation because it, it could take a bad turn. Definitely. Yeah. I was, you know, um, when I did the Grand Canyon, uh, the rim to rim to rim, that was, you know, like I said, I had never been there. I didn't, I didn't plan for doing the event. I just, my buddy asked me, you know, Hey, you want to join me? And I was mm -hmm. like, sure. He basically challenged me and I, I accepted, didn't prepare for it or anything like that. Didn't know any <laughs> kind of, into. yeah, what I was getting into literally, except on the drive there, I was Googling, you know, uh, rim to rim to rim challenge and reading some of the shit that other people had said. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about, you know how dangerous it was and and however many people die every year in the grand canyon you know whether it's exhaustion dehydration they get lost and there's no cell service or and then like when you're down there you don't realize how big it is yeah until you're huge. you're in it yeah and then it gives you a whole different perspective you on, started at dark yeah i started at four in the morning right so i just had a headlamp on so i could see just right in front of me and you know it just looks pitch black i don't i don't see anything yeah and then when the sun came up then i was like whoa this is yeah. incredible like it's so so big and yeah it's a, it's almost like reverse mountains i don't know like, yeah it, we call it, it the big ditch it shows you <laughs> it kind of gives you a perspective how, of how big things are you know yeah it's amazing country though it looks so beautiful but it is immense yeah you feel like nothing in there yeah and i was like wow okay now i see how people can you know just or like you fall off like mm -hmm. a trail or something like that and you, yeah you're toast yeah definitely and um yeah and that made me like also like damn we've just been running down these trails with this little headlamp on that was mm -hmm. dangerous mm -hmm. but uh yeah no so I don't even remember where I was going with that. <laughs> oh, I think you said it sort of reminded you of that. Oh yeah. yeah like, just the grind. It, it was just, it definitely did. Um, because I remember in that just going up the switchbacks and, uh, it there, you know, it's all uphill and, but, but there I was, um, cramping a little bit too. Mm. And luckily I had brought like some salt packets with me and, and electrolyte packets, but I didn't, I didn't have any cramping yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. That was good. I had that some... Because uh, we were up there for five hours. Yeah. I had some servium salt uh, electrolytes with me, and that was, that was nice and kept me yesterday? from... Yesterday? Yeah, I took some before. Mm. Uh, so it didn't... Uh, like, I had them in my system, so... That was a good move. Yeah. Uh, because cramping is... I've experienced cramping, mm. and, like, when you, when you have something like bad cramping there like i remember getting bad cramping at the uh grand canyon mm -hmm. and i was just thinking like man if this doesn't go away it's going to be a problem yeah because if you physically can't like my legs locked up mm -hmm. you know or my calf or something like that what, what do you do what do you do yeah. yeah it's not like anyone's coming to get you no you know and you're in the you're miles in so like there's no one to save you you have to save yourself and you yeah. have to just push through it and um but yeah luckily i got that under control at the grand canyon and got through it but uh yeah luckily i didn't experience any of that yesterday which is surprising for how hot it was and the lack of water <laughs> you know? sorry about that I, sh I should i need to do a better job <laughs> of, of providing water well it was you know it's not like you were drinking water and just you know i didn't bring any we both just well you didn't drink any water mm -hmm. yeah it's and uh, you were, but I think that was by choice. You were just trying to push yourself. I just, I just don't do it. Yeah, I mean, I just, I always figure. And like, if I'm on a hunt or in a race, of course I'm going to do everything I can to help. But I, just, I train with nothing, just so it seems, you know, you make the hardest thing mm -hmm. eat uh, harder. And then when it's still hard, it but it feels easier because you have these. You know, you were wearing socks, and I didn't wear socks yesterday. I didn't drink. I'm always just in the heat. So it's just like you prepare for the worst, hope for the best. You know, I yeah. know you're familiar with that saying. So that's kind of my training philosophy. Train hard, fight easy. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you just... You make you know, the hard, the training harder than the actual the event. Event. And that's that's been my mindset forever. So I never, I never take water. And yesterday, getting towards the end of the five hours, I was like, I could use a drink or something <laughs> right, right now. 
<laughs> for sure. <laughs> I saw, and like, um, when we got up to the top and we started coming back down, um, you know, I saw I saw this uh, woman walking up, and she she had a big like thermos of, of water, and I was just like, "Oh my god, it looks so." You should have stole it. I was like, "Oh, that looks so good," but you can't you can't like ask people for their hey, water or something like that. Like you could. That's like the desert, though. You know, I know. could it's, I take a hit of your water? Yeah, yeah. Nah, I don't know about that. Yeah, I, but it's amazing how. Uh, yeah, it's, I've been in situations like that too, where you see, like, I don't know, like looking at somebody else's water. You know what I mean? That's not mm. normal. Yeah. But you have to be so desperate, right? Where you're just like noticing <laughs> all these little things. Uh, well, that's, yeah. Well, when we were up at the top and, and, um, those two people were like, they said something about a Creek. Yeah. And, and I was like, Cam, where's that Creek? <laughs> yeah, I no. want, I want to go drink out of it. I'm and like, you no. were like, no, it's way over it's there. Past where we're part. Yeah. yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you're hoping like right around the corner there is some, <clears throat> some ice cold creek with a little pool you can oh get in. I, I would have just jumped right in there face first and drank that yeah yeah well that that was fun i mean it was uh it was a good task but was, then we went ahead and had a nice stay first we stopped and got gatorade oh yeah <laughs> yeah gatorade and electrolytes oh man that um, was good and then or had like nice pedialyte steak, you know nice steak and uh yeah so it was such just an awesome day i just loved and one one thing that stood out to me was as we're going up the ladder, you're telling the story and you kind of mentioned it yesterday about your, you went from Sparta to Thermopylae yeah. and 240 miles. You kind of mentioned it, but then you told me, uh, you kind of peeled back the onion a little bit on that story. And so I wanted, I wanted you to say that again. Okay. Um, yeah. Tell me about that experience because I think there's some important lessons in there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, for, for those that don't know, um, I had heard about this event um, where these this group these group of people were going to retrace the steps of the Spartans. So they were going to go from Sparta, Greece, and you know follow the tr the path that the Spartans took all the way to the battlefield of Thermopylae, and it was two hundred and forty miles. And the uh, you know the plan was to to do it in eight days. So just eight days in a row um, and get it done. 30 miles a day. Yeah, it was roughly, uh, you know, some days were 32 miles, some days were 34, mm. some days were 28. Like, you know, it, it averaged out to about 30, 30 miles a day. And, um, and I had heard about this event and it was going down in two weeks, like two weeks from when I heard about it. And I was like, oh, my God, that sounds so cool. And I was like a huge fan of the Spartans, you know. Did you have those tattoos before yeah, then? Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, so you've been a hardcore fan Yeah. So that time period. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll show for the camera. Yeah. Whatever. Like I've got on, on my leg here, I have Leonidas mm -hmm. and, you know, Spartan, Spartan helmet. And then I've got the elite immortal guy on the yep. other side. And just, you know, Milan LeVay, all the Spartan theme, everything, you know, yeah. to me, the Spartans were just like the ultimate badass mentality, warrior mindset, you know, uh, looking back at like ancient warriors. And I just I always respected them as warriors and their, and their uh, mindset. So, um, you know, when I heard about this opportunity to do that, I was like, that sounds so cool. Like I'm, I'm doing that. I'm in. And, uh, so I, I had like talked, talked with the people and they said, yeah, you, you can join us. And I was like, great. And, um, but in my eyes, <laughs> I was like, it's just like walking, you know, 30 miles a day. Like that doesn't sound that, yeah. that difficult. Sounds doable. I was like, I walk every day. <laughs> I, it's Yeah. How, you know, yeah, sure. It's, it's a long way, but I walk every day. It's not a big deal. And, um, cause I'm stupid. And, <laughs> and, uh, so I was like, you know what? Um, and, the, and, and the people that were also doing this event had, they had been training for it for about a year. You know, some of them were running a marathon every week in mm -hmm. order to prepare for build for that this, body up for, endurance. yeah, for yeah. this event. And, you know, I was not doing any kind of endurance anything. Um, you know, I was fighting MMA and doing jujitsu and, you know, just lifting weights and mm -hmm. stuff, but um, nothing endurance wise. And 
But, you know, I, I was in really good shape. I had muscles, you know, I was an MMA champion. I was a Navy SEAL. I was like, yeah. this will be nothing. Right. So, and, and, and I was like, you know, I like pushing myself and seeking adversity and consciously suffering, that kind of thing. So like I fasted regularly, you know, and, and like fasting for 10 days is a mental push. Oh man. You know, cause you fasted for 10 days before I, oh, all the time. Really? Yeah. I and just water or what? No, with my smashing greens. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, yeah. um, I, I did that all the time to cut weight for my fights. Mm. I would fast and just have my smashing greens and protein shakes and work out. And mm -hmm. so, but for, and like, that was a, a way to, you know, it's a mental toughness challenge to like, cause you're not tempted by anything more than food. Like food yeah. is everywhere. Your whole life revolves around food. Mm -hmm. And um, there's more restaurants than you think when you, but when you remove food from your life, you're just like, oh God, it's so much of our day. Yeah. You know, but um, so anyway, so I was used to fasting as like a mental push. And um, so I was like, you know what, this like walking, it's just not hard. It just doesn't sound hard enough. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I should fast. Um, I should do it fasting. And again, because I'm dumb yeah. and didn't know any better. And uh, so I was like, all right, I'm going to fast the whole time. So I fa and I fasted for three days before we even started because I was like, I'm going to go, you know, 10 days essentially. And fasting. normally, like before a big event, you'd carb load. You right. fill up all your cells. Everyone else was with stuffing fluid, their face with carbs. pasta. And yeah, all this glycogen and just be totally full going into it because you're going to get depleted but you went in depleted i literally sat there at dinner with them you know everybody who was also participating and they were you know eating pasta and <sighs> loading up and i sat there with my smashing greens and i just <laughs> drank my smashing greens and water and they were like dude you're crazy there's no way you're gonna do this. and i was just like i'll be fine i'll be yeah. fine and um you know, and when I got there, like the group that, that I was there with and doing this event, you know, in my head, I was like, these guys don't even deserve to be here. Hmm. You know, they're like, we're retracing the steps of like the earth's greatest warriors. And like these people didn't even serve in the military. Like they're just like ultra marathoners and yeah. like endurance athletes. And they haven't earned this right. Yeah. I'm like, and you know, like this is like paying homage the way I looked at it. I'm like, this is like paying homage to like the, you know, like, like I'm a Navy SEAL. I'm like a descendant of Spartans, you know, mm -hmm. I'm the modern day Spartan. And that was kind of my mindset. I didn't voice this to any of the people there, but that was like how I felt mm -hmm. inside. And, you know, and I was just like ultra cocky, like, you know, yeah, this is nothing. And it's, it's actually not even hard enough. I'm going to make it harder. One of the most common questions I get is how do I start hunting? My answer, gohunt.com. I actually really wish there was something like Go Hunt available to me when I was younger. It would have saved me a lot of time hunting areas that game was scarce. Go Hunt is just like Zillow, but for hunting. You can see every hunting opportunity in the West and easily sort by game you're looking to chase, along with draw odds, over-the-counter opportunities, harvest stats, and even trophy size you can expect. Even if you've been hunting your whole life, the information you can get from Go Hunt is way beyond what you'll find anywhere else. It's the best way to go on more hunts every season. They've also got public and private land maps and an online gear shop filled with field-tested hunting gear, not just the basic stuff you can buy at a big box store. If you find it in their shop, that means they've tested it on hunts and can guarantee it's good. If you haven't checked out Go Hunt, see for yourself how easy they make it to plan a hunt. You can use code CAM, that's C-A-M, when you sign up and you'll get $50 to spend in their gear shop plus 10% off most items in their store. Hoyt began with a dream and a simple desire. Create the best bow hunting and target archery equipment possible. And since 1931, that is exactly what they have been doing. I'm skeptical every year that this year's bow will be better than last year's, yet somehow their engineers seem to figure it out. I think that's what sets them apart is their engineers are all avid hunters themselves, so they take their bows in the field every year with the intent to make them stronger, faster, and more accurate. Hoyt is actually my lifetime bow sponsor. Yes, I signed a lifetime contract with them. That is how much I believe in them. Hoyt is giving listeners of the podcast 20% off products in their store with code CAM. 
C-A-M. Doesn't get much simpler than that. Sorry, it doesn't work on bows, but it does work on accessories, including quivers, rest, and my favorite, the ghost sticks. That's code CAM at checkout at Hoyt.com. Anyway, we start, and um, and it, this was in the summertime. It was very hot in Greece. It was almost 100 degrees, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's, and we also, the path was, the, the majority of the path was on pavement. Mm -hmm. And um, me, again, not knowing, you know, anything about hiking real distance or anything, like, I'm like, oh, sweet, it's on pavement, even easier. Yeah. And everyone else is like, no, like, <laughs> pavement sucks yeah. to, to walk on because it just doesn't give. Right. You know, the earth, like, trails are softer and they're and, less impact on your body. And it's, you're, you're hammering the same muscle walking on the same surface, where if it's changing or, or like up and down, it gives your body a little different feel, yeah. you know? And, but a flat road, it's the same over and over and over every step. Yeah, not to mention it's also hot. Yeah, hotter. Yeah, for sure. And um, so, and I'm like, whatever, let's do it. And 18 miles in, um, you know, again, so going from no kind of distance, anything, 18 miles in, I was like, this is awful. <laughs> like, I, I had three blisters on each foot already, Oof. and. Um, and by, by the time we got to that 18 mile, there was like a checkpoint. And I was like, I need some fucking food right now. <laughs> like there, uh, there's no way that I'm going to go another 220 miles without food. Mm -hmm. I was like, I severely underestimated this. And like, I fucked up. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, please give me some food. <laughs> <laughs> so I already like felt like a failure yeah. and a dumbass for like way underestimating that part. And then, you know, by the end of the day, I think the first day was 34 miles, I want to say, or 32. By the end of the day, I was by far the weakest link hmm. out of everyone there. There was one other SEAL with me, Jeff Gum, and uh, he was the he was just right a couple feet in front of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, we were both just <laughs> struggling. By far the weakest links. But, like, neither one of us, again, like... You know, when I heard about the event, I told him, I was like, hey, do you want to go? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I'll go. And and I remember just that first day, we were both so far behind and we were hurting so badly. Like, third, What was he saying? He was like, Mitch, you're never picking our vacation again. <laughs> He's like, you know, he was like, I was in Croatia on yachts, oh. hanging out with models. Oh. Like, you know, that's my idea of a vacation. Yeah. He's like, this is horrible. And, um, but, and, you know, that was funny, but yeah, we finished the first day and I felt like I got hit by a freaking truck. Hmm. I was in so much pain and I couldn't believe that we had to do that again tomorrow. And Cause we were, we were on seven more days. Yeah. yeah. And we were on the road for 12 hours because, yeah. it, you know, walking it takes a while. Yeah. It takes a lot longer to walk than run. And like people think when they hear like walking, they think, oh, that's not as bad as running, mm -hmm. but it's, it's way more steps and impact and it's, it's just a different thing. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, the next day, um, I just like, I can't believe I'm going to have to do this again. And I just, I've, I'm already in it. I've got to go. So start going again. And, you know, by the time we get to like our, our checks and everything, my, ankles are just swelled up my feet are swelled up blisters just are crazy my knees are starting to hurt my hips are starting to hurt really bad and um you know and then by the end of the day again still felt like i got hit by a bigger truck and everyone there was so helpful and nice you know and they had they had experience so they knew what they were doing so they brought like compression socks they brought blister kits they brought extra shoes that were bigger because they knew their feet were going to swell they they had like one guy had like the nordic um you know compression yeah, pants sleeves. things sleeves and yeah. you know so it was just everyone there was prepared you know and i, I showed up like this like mm -hmm. hey let's go walk <laughs> like it's not that big deal and um and like I said, it it humbled me so much because I was like, wow, if these people knew the way that I felt about them and like judged them in my head when I got here, 
you know, they, if they knew how I really felt like they, they would all be like just pointing and laughing and being like, ha, you get what you deserve. Mm -hmm. Fucking dick. And they would have been totally in the right, Mm -hmm. you know, but, but it was actually the opposite. Like they were, they were just nothing but nice and helpful and, you know, gave me compression socks and like gave me advice and, you know, blister kits and all the, and all this stuff. And were you know positive nice people yeah. and they had been training you know and were prepared for so like they were not the weakest links at all mm-hmm. i was right and i was just like dude i'm the one that doesn't deserve to be here what, and, what a lesson though yeah you know, i mean it's a lesson in humility really truly like yeah. it changed changed my life mm. you know um it, it it just taught me the biggest lesson of humility and uh yeah and like by day four um you know, uh, we were, we were going and again, I was still just so in so much pain and so far behind and like by far the weakest link still. And, um, you know, I'd already been, I had already been like humbled, you know, you know, that, that part was clear, but still I was really, really hurting and struggling and I wanted to finish this event. You know, I, I've never quit anything and, um, you know, being a SEAL, we're retracing the steps of the Spartans. We're actually doing this to raise money for a fallen Navy SEAL. I'm one of two Navy SEALs here. And like at the time I had 70,000 followers on my Instagram or 50,000 followers on my Instagram. And I was like building my brand of massive and like one of our mottos is don't be a pussy and the other <laughs> quitting is not really an option. <laughs> right. And the other motto is mindset is everything. So That's a lot of pressure. So, yeah. And, and I've got, everyone knows that I'm here doing this cause mm-hmm. I posted about it and said I was going to do it. And, um, you know, so I'm just, and, and at this point I can barely walk. Like every step I take is just grueling. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't think that I can physically finish this race. I mean, we're we're not we're not even 120 miles in yet, and I've still got to go over 120 miles, and I'm I am so physically broken right now, and um, it it's just so painful every single step. It's hot as hell out, and these days are 12 hours of walking mm-hmm. on the road on the pavement. And, um, yeah, and I was just like, I literally don't think I can finish. And then I'm starting to think about like, how am I going to tell people that I, that I quit? And like, there's no way that I can spin this, you know, it's just, yeah, this, I I had to give up because it was just too hard. It was too much. And I was like thinking about that and I'm like, everything I like, stand for my brand everything will just be it will be just clear as day that i'm a fraud and like this is bullshit and like you know i I can't talk about this like i'm not even living up to what i say and preach about so you know the thought of that just like becoming a reality was just too much to like bear like i was like i'd rather just die and i meant it and um you know, so I was just like, at that point, I was just like, well, I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere in Greece. It's hot as hell. Like I'm by myself because the group is so far ahead of me. And, and I was just like, I'm just going to run until I die. And that's just where I'm at with it. And I meant it. And I just started running, just fully prepared to just fall on my face and die. And, um, and that would have been better. <laughs> you know that that would have yeah. been a better story and like one that I would want of told, you know, rather than me saying I just quit because it was too right. hard. And um, and I just started running, anticipating death, and it never came. And I ended up like passing everybody, and they were just like looking around, like what the fuck, <laughs> like because they knew how badly how I was hurting. Were. Yeah, and they were just like, you know, I got to the finish line, and that day was a brutal one. It was like, we went around this, this giant lake and then like went up this, this mountain, like up this mountain. And it was like a lot of switchbacks and then down it. And, um, 
and and I was waiting at the finish line because I had just finished and everybody got there, you know, a couple hours later and they were like, dude, what the hell <laughs> happened? Like what got into you? And I was like, I have no idea. Wow. I literally have no idea how that just happened. And then they're like, dude, that's crazy. You know? And then the next day I just did it again. Hmm. And then it like, I started to kind of like get a rhythm almost like my body just adapted. Mm -hmm. It was just like, all right, I guess this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. So then I, and then, and then at that point, you know, we were probably 150 miles in and the, and the people that I was with, like, that's when like their, they started to really start to fatigue and like their blisters and the swelling and all that stuff that, basically I experienced day one, mm -hmm. you know, their training and preparation kind of took them into day five, day six before they started really hurting. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so then they were kind of in experiencing that and everybody in the group was suffering. Like there was no way around it. Everyone, it sucked all the way around. Like we had James Lawrence who iron cowboy, you yeah, know, world, beast. world record holder for Ironman's, you know, monster mentality and uh, mental toughness and physical toughness. And he was saying like, he was like, dude, this is brutal. This mm -hmm. sucks. And you know, when not, when and it you, was, I'm sure. Yeah. And like knowing what he's been through and yeah. he's saying that you're like, damn, yeah, this, okay. This real. So I guess I'm not that big of a bitch <laughs> for feeling this, like this sucks so bad. Cause yeah. it does. And, um, yeah. And, and, and at, at that point, like, again, my body just kind of felt like, more adapted and um and then the last day i remember like it was like a 20 mile day was the last day and the the mountain range in the background i had been to thermopylae in the past um uh you know because i had visited greece and i went and saw thermopylae when i was on uh you know when i went there the first time so i knew what the mountain range looked like, mm -hmm. you know, the hot gates and all that. Yeah. So I had seen that mountain range and I was just like, man, like I just, this, I just went through like my own hero's journey, you mm -hmm. know, and just experienced the most humbling thing I've ever experienced. And, uh, you know, and this was literally the hardest thing I've ever done. The most I've ever had to push myself way more than hell week, you know, when, when, with hell week, I was prepared for mm -hmm. hell week. Cause like I had been training and, you know, training for buds. I had gone through all this, you know, hard shit yeah. previous to get to hell week. You know, I had already done so much with this. It was just kind of, yeah, let me just jump in and, you know, and it was just boom, you hit by a truck. Yeah, underestimated it. Yeah. yeah. And so this was literally the hardest thing I'd ever done mm. and experienced. And the most that I had to push myself and dig deep, you know, even in hell week, I never felt like, like I have to dig deep and, or I'm going to die. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I never had to push myself to that, that level it's in this event I did. Mm -hmm. So it was totally just like, you know, it's just such, such an ex experience for growth. And, um, and I was thinking about the Spartans and how they just did this thing that we just did and was so hard and grueling and, you know, everybody's hurting right now. And they had to, on top of that, when they got there, fight to the death. And, you know, I was thinking about that and like, they, you know, they all kissed their wives and kids goodbye and, Greece is such a beautiful country and, you know, they just like, and, you know, that was one of the greatest things about it was I got to see Greece, mm -hmm. you know, a, a ton of Greece. Right. And I got to see it from a very slow perspective, yeah, unique, you know, unique, unique looking yeah. around and like, wow, it's so beautiful. And right. I'm and appreciating I'm, it. Yeah. For 12 hours a day, I'm on the, on a hike, Yeah, you know? And so I was like thinking about those guys, did that they got to see how beautiful they knew how beautiful their country was and everything and like they were willing to to do that and and fight and die for what they loved and believed and everything and um you know all of that just mixed emotions and experience that just fueled me and i was just like i just gotta run and i just like ran as hard as i could 
um, you know, to the, to the mountain range. And, um, yeah. And they sent someone on a bike to come like, Hey, Hey, they want you to slow down, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so that we can all finish together. And I was like, I can't, like, I literally, I'm just like, I'm way too in the zone to stop. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I will, I'll pull over like, you know, 200 yards before the finish line and wait. And, you know, and then we can all finish together. Like, mm-hmm. I'm totally fine with that. But like, I, I just can't stop right now. Right. I, I need to do this. And so I just kept doing it, ran, and then got to 200 yards before the finish line, pulled over and waited. Two hours later, the group, you know, came and we all finished mm. together. And the mayor of Thermopylae was there and the news cameras and everything. And they gave us certificates because we were the first ones to ever retrace the steps mm. of the Spartans. And there's a big, you know, statue of Leonidas both at in Sparta mm-hmm. and there's a uh, one in and the battlefield at Thermopylae. Mm. So we went from statue to statue. Wow. And um what an experience. Yeah, and then we went and got in the uh the hot gates. It's like a natural spring, you mm-hmm. know, hot spring. And yeah, it was just like wow, what a freaking journey that and, was. It, and those guys it, had to do it wearing all their their uniform like yeah. didn't they have carrying their shields and swords and what beasts were they dude, and going crazy. to battle right just to get there yeah when i got there it was like yeah i couldn't do sh- like a celebration if i had to fight someone oh. <laughs> it would look a lot like when i fought sean Strickland. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, getting my ass beat yeah How, how'd your buddy do uh they, yeah he, 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 it was pretty similar. Yeah. Like he just, he was, like I said, he wasn't very far ahead of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were both definitely the weakest links and that, but we both kind of had the same trajectory. Yeah. Like he finished, he fin- finished strong. Yeah. Good, good. But, uh, yeah, it experience. was just like, it was just like the most drastic swing oh, for me. You yeah. Know? Going from him. I'm the badass to like, yeah. I can't do this. Yeah. That's, yeah. but it's like, you know, we kind of learn those lessons in life, usually over an extended period of time. You just yeah. packed it all Mine was in. condensed. <laughs> Very condensed, but still, and even more powerful because it's so much was writing on it. It's just like, for you to be so honest about it is, I think, I think we all can learn from that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you, uh, you're sharing that and how you, you know, the honesty about how you felt. And it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, that walk in humility, we all can grow from that i think i mean nobody wants to get knocked down in the dirt right yeah. and get humbled but life has a way of doing that yeah and the first thing i did when i got home was i made a, a shirt for my brand and it said be humble <laughs> that was it it's great advice and and you know like because that's how most of my shirts were they were just sayings yeah. you know i had mindset is everything mm-hmm. i had don't be a pussy shirt yeah. you know i had a seek adversity shirt i had you know know thyself and just these little sayings you know that i yeah you know embodied or, or believed in and um yeah and as soon as i got home i was like make a shirt that says <laughs> be humble that's yeah. it i think uh, yeah i think we all could have that dose every once in a while or that reminder i guess but uh yeah i I, that story is it's fascinating just because it's like i think we've all been to a place where we judge people you know and like Mm -hmm. you judge those people to start and you're like they don't even deserve to be here and then they were helping you and it's just like well they they definitely deserve to be there way more than i did (laughs) yeah but it's like that that part of that story is what stood out to me which is why i was hopefully you would you would share that here and i'm glad you did because it's man that's tough it's freaking yeah. tough dude but uh i'm so glad you stuck with i'm glad you didn't die first yeah, of all me too <laughs> man but it would have been a kind of a cool way to go out right you know if you got if you got to go out everybody has to hey and that's what i felt yesterday uh coming down the mountain from the second one after the rock yeah coming down the mountain um damn that sucked just as bad almost you know (laughs) it it was bad uh um it was really hurting my knees um just walking down it like that and we had just been up there for almost five hours in the heat with no water basically and uh and i remember i was just thinking like damn 
I look like a wounded animal right now, <laughs> and I hope I hope no freaking mountain lion or yeah. bear comes out be easy after target. me because I, yeah, I'm I'm gonna be easy easy uh, for the you for did the, for dude, the taking. You did good. That was hard. That was freaking hard. I all the respect in the world to you for doing that. It's uh yeah, I was yeah. I understand that it sucked, but you did it. And I, I thought people enjoyed that video up at top where, where I asked you, I said, would you rather do this again right now or spar strong, Sean Strickland? And you said spar him five times. I yeah, think. I said I would rather spar Sean Strickland five times. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and and let's let me be clear on why that is. It's okay. not because sh- sparring Sean Strickland was easy. It was because simply the duration, you yeah. know. Like, and people are like, "Oh, Sean took it easy on you," and I'm like. I know he took it easy on me <laughs> and that's why it made it worse <laughs> because yeah, he didn't knock you out. Yeah. If he would have just knocked me out in 30 seconds, I would have only had to suffer for 30 seconds. Right. But he made intentionally, he did not want to knock me out so that I would suffer for the full 25 minutes. And again, even if I just sparred Sean for t- t- five more times, mm-hmm. that that still is the duration of suffering less. is less than what I just experienced you know, carrying this rock and, yeah. and doing all this in the heat. And, you know, so it's not, it's not because it's, Oh, Sean was easy. Cause that, that sucked as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just sucked for 25 minutes. Yeah. You yeah. Know, this sucked for a lot longer, oh, almost yeah. five hours. <laughs> it was, it was rough. It was definitely rough. Um, but yeah. And then we were hopeful yesterday. This is like the, the kind of the cool part about doing back to back. We were like, <laughs> Oh, Goggins and Sean are going to be best friends. You know, they're going to, they're more alike than they are different. And then we see Sean <laughs> makes a, a post today where it's like, Okay, maybe maybe not. <laughs> this, maybe this isn't going to go the way we were hoping. But uh, yeah, so he saying something about David again. But who knows? He said he said that David Goggins. The only thing you're better than me at is running, and I don't need to run. You run for me or something <laughs> like that. He Sean just doubles down on everything, <laughs> which I. You know, you you said you wouldn't spart him because he has a way of going viral, right? So he's yeah. like, you could draw attention to this you know, help make amends or be the, the sacrificial lamb. So maybe his post about Goggins today is just another way of doing that. Maybe yeah. it's just keeping this skit going. He's, he does say he's, I mean, he is funny. Oh, Sean's funny. Yeah, yeah. for sure. He, he's funny. So it's like, maybe he's just, you know, cause I, I'm like, to me, I always get protective cause I love Goggins. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm like, I don't want anybody saying shit about him, you yeah. know? Cause I'm like, God dang it. That's, that's my guy, yeah. you know? So I get protective, but maybe it's like, maybe it's part of an act. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's like an act, but I think Sean's just having fun and just says whatever he wants. And, yeah. you know, cause he's not afraid. You know, what are you, right. gonna, what are you going to do to me? I wouldn't know what that's like. It yeah. might be kind of cool to have no fear about anything, no matter what you say. It's like, he, you he's know, like, you're not going to come shoot me in the face. <laughs> like, so what, what are you going to do? Like, yeah. are you going to come fight me about it? Yeah. I'm like, no, you're not. So I'm right. going to just say whatever I want to say. And he does. Hey, well, with, I mean, it's, what are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. You know, like make a video about him. That doesn't bother him. No, no. Whatever. He's a come do the man dance. Oh man. Yeah. He's a handful, isn't he? Oh uh, yeah. But we need, <laughs> we need people like that other two to, to, I guess to keep it interesting. Yeah, I don't know. He keeps it interesting. Yeah, but come on, not about Goggins. <laughs> I, I I still am hopeful that once they meet each other and you know are in the same room and share some of their mentality, because like again, I've talked to, to both David. Mm-hmm. I've talked to to Sean, and like after talking to Sean and like the way his mentality is with his team and, and, uh, you know, with MMA and everything, it's very similar, you know, David just, he's an extreme person, you know, and like he wanted to like take his fitness and everything to an extreme level. And, you know, and if you can't keep up, it's cause you're a bitch. (laughs) And that's kind of how Sean is like, Hey, we're going to fucking spar. And if you don't don't like your bitch you know or whatever and they're both they both double down on what they do yeah and like so they they are similar yeah they are way. they are similar and you know they both had interesting rough hard childhoods mm-hmm. you know feel probably a little misunderstood maybe um 
you know, so I, I'm again, I'm, I'm hopeful. I think that it, uh, in the end, Hey, maybe, maybe Sean, I hope Sean does the, the, uh, he said he wants to do the, the bud style workout beat down and he wants me to try to make him quit. And, and he even said, he was like, I probably will quit. And he's like, cause <laughs> I'm a, I'm a pussy when it comes to the cold water and, and yeah. being all sandy and running. That doesn't sound fun at all. Right. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. I think, I think it would be good for him to experience it though. Maybe, maybe it would be like a humbling experience yeah. for him. Kind of right. like how the, 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 uh, the Spartan walk was for me. I don't know. We could have him carry the rock up the mountain about five times. See what he thinks of that. I think just carrying it once would be enough <laughs> to uh, prove, you know, just show that this sucks. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where this goes. This is just yesterday and then today. So who knows what tomorrow's going to bring? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> I'm just, I'm here for it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I want to, this is like a little recap, but I just want to end up, you know, this is your bow here sitting oh, here yeah. and you shot it. I mean, you've never shot a compound before. No. And dude, the, the way, the accuracy you had at the end was, I mean, it, it is a top of the line bow, so that does help, but <laughs> it's still the, it's not the, it's not the equipment, it's the archer, right? And yeah. you were freaking laying them in there. And uh, yeah. I don't know, I was really impressed with how quick you picked it up because your first couple pulls is like, obviously you'd never done it. Mm -hmm. And it, those look pretty rough. And by the end, you were just like... I mean, I was trying to Robin Hood. It. Oh, you were close, dude. They were those last couple of groups were freaking tight. I was. I mean, you you can shoot, but it's. I'm not. I shouldn't be surprised because you know a weapon is a weapon, and you understand what it takes. But man, you were good. I well, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. But that, yeah, I was. So, I was shocked. Like I, when you were saying like they're getting your bow ready or whatever, I thought we were just shooting like a bow. Like for I was, fun. yeah. Like I thought we were just going to go to the range and, you know, we were going to shoot or whatever. You're like, no, this is a bow that you're. They, this will be your bow. You're keeping yeah. it. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? Like yeah. that's crazy. This I, is yours. Yeah. I mean, that blew me away. I was like, holy moly, that's yeah. that's insane. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, and I was like, oh wow, okay. Uh, I've never shot a bow like this, and there was a lot to think about. Like there was a lot of of uh, different points you yeah. know points of performance and um and it was a little bit overwhelming at first just kind of thinking about all of all of the things while you're yeah. holding that attention yeah at yeah. tension and trying to and i'm trying to listen to um wayne. wayne wayne i was trying to listen to wayne and all the points of performance that he was saying and remember him and the whole time i'm i'm sitting here my shoulders are already <laughs> sore from that damn rock yeah and you know i'm under tension looking through the sights and it's just getting shakier and shakier and shakier and the longer i'm holding it right. and i was just like i just want to shoot this damn thing <laughs> you know and uh so like and I was trying really hard to listen to all the points of performance that he was, he was saying. Um, but I was, I was telling him like, I really feel like the longer I'm at tension, trying to get everything that you're saying, perfect. I'm just getting shakier and shakier. Yeah. And I was like, I really feel I would be more accurate if I just like pulled it back, got that acceptable sight picture and let it yeah. fly. And cause there are a lot of similarities to, rifle shooting mm -hmm. and i was always really good with a rifle and you know doing stress courses and stuff like that which is similar so it goes stress courses you're running and like doing workouts or something like that and you're running station to station and you're doing it for time mm. and each missed shot is like a penalty it's like or you know it adds 30 seconds to your time so I was always really good at those and, you know, running to somewhere, getting on target, getting that acceptable sight or acceptable, you know, uh, sight picture and then boom, pulling the trigger. Mm -hmm. And same thing, you want to let it surprise you. You don't want to anticipate it. And so there was definitely like some similarities with it. And I was just like, yeah, I just kind of want to, to, to do that. And, yeah. and he was like, all right, we'll see. Yeah. And then I started doing that and. He was like, I think he was kind of like, damn. <laughs> yeah. He was like, how is this, you know, he's Working. like, you're not doing any of the correct, <laughs> uh, you know, anchor points or whatever. Right. But he's like, but you're shooting better and better. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, I guess if it works for you, just keep yeah. doing that. And you kind of, you refine your, your style, you know, eventually. Yeah. Um, this is your first day, but 
as I said, going down there, nobody is born a great archer. Yeah. You know, it's a skill you develop and you developed very quickly today. And, you know, so some people it takes a lot longer. You were just like so quick, but it's probably because of your background for sure. And mm -hmm. you're just, I think, naturally good at it. Yeah, you're not born great, but some people are more inclined to develop that greatness quicker. And that's you. And, uh, man, you're shooting great by the end. And it was, was I just, was I love sharing archery, you know, with people. That's why. You know, I mean, that's the whole point to this is training with people, sharing my life with them and then sharing archery, which has changed my life. And so that's, it's, it, as again, it means as much to me as you or anybody else. I mean, yeah, it was, it was really, um, fun. I've, I've never done that. Like I said, uh, at, at any kind of serious level mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and, and this is like a freaking top of the line tool and sites and all that stuff it's just you know that's that's next level and yeah. uh yeah it was really it was really fun i had a lot of fun with it good yeah. work good workout too <laughs> i was like you oh know. shooting the bow yeah yeah i know it, it can because it is a new movement you haven't done before so that's all different muscles engaged mm -hmm. yeah but it's very it's physical it's physical to shoot a bow especially when you're first developing that um it's it's just like a weird weird there's a technique to it yeah and it's almost like shooting free throws you mm -hmm. know how like you you just you got to get the same or you know the repetition but getting like a little system down mm -hmm. and you do it the same way every time and trying to just replicate it yeah just mm -hmm. replicate it and nail that free throw or whatever nail that bullseye and um, keep your grouping tight and and it's um it's satisfying for sure Watching the arrow hit the X. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you Your know, last group, you had three X's. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I was, I was definitely, once I, once I kind of got, got it dialed in, it was, I could see how it could be, you know, like just really satisfying, like shooting, trying to get, you know, 20 arrows and you want them all in the X or yeah. something. You know what I'm looking forward to? And we talked about it a little bit, but you have a lot of deer on your property. Yeah. I cannot wait for you to experience the emotions of a successful hunt and what that means to be a provider, you know, through mm -hmm. hunting and, and through putting an arrow through through an animal and having a merciful death offered. Um, to me, that's hopefully the first day of that journey. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, I've, I've never bow hunted before, but um, I'm certainly open to it and and uh i i definitely want to get more reps in and you know feel more confident and not that i wouldn't feel confident going out even now and trying mm -hmm. it just from what i've learned and you know uh i get i get the idea yeah well you'll get home get a target and uh get the start shooting arrows every yeah, day i will it's gonna be awesome no, but it's uh fun yeah, Mitch. Thank, thank you so much for, oh, for the bow and for everything. It's been incredible. This has been a, a great couple of days. Um, I haven't told you this yet, but you're flying out tomorrow. So I'm hoping I can pick you up at nine and we can go bust out Spencer's in the morning. And then I'll take you to the airport. What's Spencer's? Just a little hill. Just a little hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a little, just to make sure you get enough rest on the plane yeah yeah <laughs> you're just but you're a thoughtful friend i am man i'm so isn't that generous yeah, you're so yeah nice uh but no seriously it's been been great spending time with you i've you know learned a lot i've loved your stories i love sharing this experience with you and uh you are you know exactly as i expected and uh it's you know it's been been great having you here and it means a lot that you came all the way out here from virginia and uh, i'm very thankful Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, again, you are, as expected, um, even, even better, you know, in person. Uh, and I've, I've followed you for years, looked up to you for years. And, um, you know, I, I think you're, you're, you're almost too humble, you mm -hmm. know, to just the level of, of, of accomplishments that you've had, you do. And the, the level of human being that you are is, is, uh, it's, it's, nothing short of inspirational and motivational and um definitely being around you everything just makes me want to step my game up and just mm -hmm. push myself and and also you know your the level of humility you have the kindness you have and everything you, you 
you deserve, you know, everything you have and more. And uh, I'm super happy to to see your success. Even over the last, you know, five years, six years, we've been following each other, like, and seeing your, you know, the the rise of your success and 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 not everything that's come came come your way again m- you know s- completely deserved and more and uh i'm excited to see where you go from here oh thank you thank you that and kind words i feel undeserved but thank you it's uh been a great time thanks yeah. mitch all right guys thank you little bonus podcast for you yeah. keep hammering every step i take i move my truth every time they tell me stop i use every comment hate that makes my feel gather up my energy and boom i hear them talking saying the way that i move is so reckless that is a part of my mind i've been blessed with giving my blood so i am relentless my fault they want someone to blame they sent their hate it fuels my pace i am roy tough i am the change the fuel endure feeling like 